Hi, this is Hal Ruth with Equalizer 9, and this is your Equalizer 9 Tip of the Week. Today, I'm going to make a bold statement. You can increase your profitability by as much as 40%. And there are many ways you, can, you might do it, uh, but we're going to talk about one way today. We're going to talk about manipulating win rate. Like I said, it's just one way. It may be uh, that if you have profit fade, that would be an obvious place where you need to look first, right? If you have significant profit fade, get to the root of that, fix that. That'll help tremendously. Your overhead may be out of whack uh, based on the size of the company and the amount of revenue you're pushing. An obvious place to look to increase your profitability. It may be you're not getting reimbursables within your job costs at appropriate levels. Another obvious place to look. Or it may be that you just don't price your work correctly. Uh, and so you, you've got to be able to cover more of your overhead and drive more profitability in the way your pricing structure works. So those are ways that you can increase your profitability. But that's not what we're talking about today. What we're talking about today is manipulating your win rate. Now, you hear me all the time on my videos talk about win rate. And you're thinking, why does this matter so much to him? Uh, it seems arbitrary, but it's not. And what we're going to talk about today is basically three areas. One, how you define win rate. That's important. Number two is the impact of increasing your win rate and why it matters. And then number three is we'll talk very briefly on how you impact win rate. So first, let's talk about what it means. So we're talking about win rate, also known as get rate or acquisition rate. And basically, it's just a scorecard of how successful you are versus what you pursue. And we define it in two ways. We're going to have a, a win rate on volume and a win rate on the number of projects or the count. And so the definition is simply this. It is the amount of uh, in dollars we won over dollars pursued in a given year. So for example, if we pursued 100 million, we won 50 million, then our win rate would be 50% on volume as a win rate. If we come down here and that same 100 million we pursued was represented by 15 projects, and the same 50 million that we won was represented by uh, five projects. So that would be five over 15. That would be a 33% win rate on count. 50% on volume, 33% on count. And, and why do we do uh, the calculation in both ways? Because it will tell a story for us. If this number is higher than this number, it tells us we're doing a very good job winning the big jobs and we're not doing so good job, not such a good job pursuing the small jobs. If it were the other way around and it was a high percent on count and a very low percent on volume, it tells us we're not winning the big ones. So it gives us an indication of where we need to focus our attention and time to get better. Uh, so let me tell you this. Uh, historically, win rate in the uh, commercial construction world is about 20%. That is the historic norm, industry average. Now, I think it's probably a little higher right now because the market has been so healthy. So probably it's been around 25% in the last couple of years. It'll go back down to 20% or even lower if we get into a recession. But this is where the range has been industry average. Now, the best of the best, the elite in the world, win at about a 45% rate, okay? And so this is where we want to get to. We're going to talk a little bit in a while about the impact of this discrepancy. But the first thing, another thing I want to do before I move on to the impact, I, I would be remiss if I didn't tell you how to define pursuits. So pursuits are, it's, well, let me tell you what it's not. It's not just you went in the interview versus three others and you, the client told you you lost. And well, that's an obvious loss, correct? But what if way back months before you were calling on this client and they wouldn't even take a meeting with you? That's still a loss. It is a, still a loss because the client made an active decision not to pick you or not to even talk to you. Or maybe you, you had several meetings and you were pursuing it and then they didn't send you an RFP. Well, you wanted one, so you lost. They made the decision, not you. Or you, did, or you sent an RFP, but you didn't shortlist, shortlist for interview. Again, they made the decision, not you. That is a loss and would go into dollars pursued. But on the other hand, let's say early on you were pursuing a client and a project, and then you made the active decision 
uh, we're going we're gonna to decline to pursue this. We're not moving forward. We're going to put our time into other places where we can move probability, maybe because the project doesn't fit us. Maybe we don't have the staff available that would, that would fit the timing of that job. Or maybe you think someone else is wired for it. Whatever the reason, you made an active decision to not pursue it. That does not go into this total because we don't want to penalize ourselves for making good business decisions. But what we also want to do is be honest. Because if I've, I've and the reason I say this, I've seen people say, well, no, no, we didn't really pursue that. We backed out. But why did you back out? Did you back out because you made an active decision? Did you back out because the client just wouldn't call you back? Because if the client wouldn't call you back, that's a loss. We need to be honest because if we're not honest in our scorekeeping, we don't know where to make impact. And, that's, and so that's why we got to be honest about this. So this is how you calculate it. Well, let's move on to the impact of win rate. Uh, manipulation and I got my cheat sheet here on my math so I won't have to do math on the fly uh, and let's let's get busy on this so this represents current state future state another future state so current state let's say you pursue one billion dollars in work and your win rate is 25 percent that means you would win around 250 million dollars in revenues for that given year now, I know that sales don't equate revenue. Uh, there's usually a, a, a there you have backlog and it, it, it delays. But if you consistently sold that amount, you would consistently put that revenue in place. So we're just to make our math easy. We're going to say that 250 million in revenue at an average of 2%, which is roughly the average net profitability in the commercial construction industry, that would mean a net profit of $5 million. Okay, now, so let's say future state that we are good at manipulating our win rate to our favor and we're able to move it from 0.25 to 0.38. So we move it 13% in our favor. We're winning 13%. We increase our win rate from 25% to 38%. Now, to do that, in all likelihood, we're going to pursue less. We're going to chase less and we're going to win more. So we're only pursuing $900 million dollars. At a 38% win rate, that means our total one went up to 342. 2% of that equals 6.84 in profitability. Now, do some quick math right here. That means our win rate went up 13%, and it means that our net profitability went up by 37%. Now, I like that math. Increase this 13%, that goes up 37%. Now let's go to future state two. We continue to get better. We're only pursuing 850 million now, but our win rate has went up to 45%. And that means that we have won $382 million. Our net profitability, if we still work on 2%, that means we have 7.6 million in profitability. So, from the beginning, our win rate has went up 20%, 20 points. Our profitability has went up 52% from where we started. So, I like, I like these trends, right? Okay, so you can start to see, by just manipulating our win rate by 13 basis points, our net profitability went up 37%. And by manipulating it, to get up to 20% from where we started, our net profitability went up 52%. That's dramatic. Now, you're probably saying, you know how it makes sense, but that would be like you telling a basketball team that's not winning, all right, guys, the way we're going to win is score more points. And that sounds overly simplistic, right? you got to tell them how to score more points. So now we're going to move on to the third part. And I'm just going to touch this because this is a lot of stuff. But how do you increase your win rate from 25 to 45%? You become very good at go, no go, discipline, saying no to things. You become very good at client data mining, creating win messaging plans, zippering up client relationships. We're going to, that's a subject coming in one of my um, tips of the week soon. Keeping score, you got to be good, really good at keeping score brain-friendly presentations, ghosting the competition, getting very engaged in creating a community engagement plan, 
thought leadership within your community, thinking intentionally about how we create thought leadership in the community, analyzing trends on why we win and lose so we can change the way we do things, change our behaviors, debriefs after losses and wins, after losses to create sentiment for the next project and a lot of training and coaching on all of those so that becomes part of our corporate DNA. Now, all that sounds simple, but it requires a lot of discipline and a lot of intentionality. Uh, now, most of the time, in, if, you've, if you've noticed, in my um, tips of the week, I don't do an advertisement. I just give you content. This is a very quick advertisement. Manipulating win rate and creating the discipline and intentionality to do that is what we do. And these kind of results I'm talking about, moving from a 25% win rate to a 45% win rate, and then increasing that profitability like that is what I had done in my career over and over, and I have a system to do it. Uh, go to my website, look at my case studies, and, uh, and read the testimonials. Uh, but anyway, that's what we do. So, and I'll also let you know that if we accomplish this, the ROI typically on what uh, we charge would be about a 2,000% ROI on the investment of hiring us. This one would be 2,800% uh, ROI. So uh, that's the kind of impact we can make. So anyway, win rate. If you can increase your win rate, your profitability will go up dramatically. And you can do it. I've seen it done time and again. And also, by the way, if we can accomplish this, if we can create... Uh, make this part of the DNA of your company, it will recession-proof you. You may, if you can get to where you're doing 45% on your win rate and carry that on into a recessionary environment, you will just take work from other people. You'll just keep on trucking. So anyway, that's your Equalizer 9 Tip of the Week. Love to hear your comments and your thoughts. Please like us on LinkedIn and please comment on LinkedIn. Hey, it helps me uh, uh, with the algorithm so more people can see my content so you'd be helping me out a lot. Again, thank you so much. Bye -bye. Connect with or follow me on LinkedIn as I'd love for you to be a part of the Equalizer 9 community. Again, I'm Hal Ruth. Thanks for watching and we'll catch you next week on the Equalizer 9 Tip of the Week.